But oh uh, goodness sake! But you've started this catastrophic comics. How is it tied in with Arcana Studios? Arcana is another company okay. that we. Uh, essentially what happened is they beat us, they beat us to the license, uh, okay. uh, two weeks ahead of time with, with, uh, the Cannell organization. So, uh, they, they really needed our help to push it forward and we needed the license to be able to acquire it. So after the third issue, we are no longer working with them and they are moving on. They've got bigger and better things to do. They've got some films in the works. And uh, they don't want to do anything for fun anymore. Just all, <laughs> can you imagine, they want to make money. So this is going to be an ongoing monthly series. Well, we're, ho- we're hoping that it is. You know, it, 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 so far the issues have merited that. It's got to pay for itself at least. We right. don't need to make money, but it's got to at least pay for itself. So, you know, all that discretionary spending is kind of tough right now. Right, but, right. Uh, but our fans have been terrific, <clears throat> and they seem to be buying the book. And uh, as far as I know, we're going to go forward. We are going to try and make a mo- – you know, we just did a um, – uh, uh, just coincidentally, uh, just a fact that we are the first to do a motion that Sparks uh, oh, was yeah. the first motion comic on iPhone. Uh, not, on I- I- I t- not on iTunes, but on iPhone. It was the right. first comic book motion comic book application. And we're going to do the same thing with um, with Greatest American Hero. We're going to do that and see if we can uh, even branch out and, and be able to uh, release that on iTunes as well. And I'm going to use the voices of Bob Cope and Connie Selica and myself and Michael Pere, who incidentally does the, the voice of Sparks in the book. Uh, Faye Grant I'm hoping to get. I mean, all the original characters. So it should be a lot of fun. Oh, it sounds like it. It sounds like it. Yeah, it is pretty cool. And we have some other stuff that we're going to do in that. We're incorporating a, a, a little game with that as well. So it should be a lot of fun. For 99 cents, it's great value. Yeah. yeah. The comic book is online. What's Catastrophic's website again? Uh, catastrophiccomics.com. And you can even find it on eBay, right? And you can find it on eBay as well. We, we, are, we are selling back issues and uh, autographed issues. Should anyone want to, uh, want to uh, have that or, or leave a note for me and... I, I certainly respond to emails, and uh, I think I'm an average guy. You're on the radio. You're not an average guy. <laughs> <laughs> not only did I get the autograph copy, but I got two additional copies of the first issue too. So maybe I'm not an average guy. I'm just your basic average geek. I'm a huge fan of the uh, of the Greatest American Hero and and a fan of yours. And well, thank uh, you. I'm looking forward to to seeing each comic come out. Um, every I like I love the cover to the second issue because it is you, it, you know, your character flying through the air like you would on the on the show, which which was awesome. Yeah, it was kind of goofy, huh? <laughs> oh, there ain't nothing at all wrong with Goofy. Goofy's good. We like Goofy. Goofy works. Now, you've had a pretty exciting career. You, you, you went on from the greatest American hero to being Paul Drake Jr., mm-hmm. to being in, in the House movie series and on the House television series. You were even on uh, the season premiere of Heroes last fall. Yeah, that was pretty special. You know, I had worked with the director and some of the producers prior, and they, they you know, there wasn't really anything for any prolonged uh, uh, arc on the show, but they said, would you like to come in and do a a little uh, kind of a cameo and play this bad guy. And I jumped at it because it's, it's really been one of my favorite shows. I've, I don't watch it as much this season because I've been busy, but mm-hmm. uh, the first couple of seasons, I've watched it religiously. And I don't watch a lot of television. Is, is there a difference between Heroes and what you were doing? No, I, 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 I don't know. I think it was timely. It was, uh, it was good luck mm-hmm. for all of us uh, that was, were associated with it. But, uh, you know, our show is much different. It, 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 it really sat on the fence between comedy and drama. And that was always the challenge. Every show is uh, where to have some poke fun at ourselves and where to play it straight. And I think, uh, honestly, I think that just the casting was, uh, was really uh, uh, kismet because uh, there was tremendous chemistry between uh, Bob Culp, Connie Selica, and myself. And, and I got to tell you something, Dave, because last year at the kickoff of the comic book, right. Red American Hero, I, I, was, I was lucky enough to get Connie Selica and Bob Culp to accompany me down to San Diego, San Diego Comic-Con wow. and do a big panel. Uh-huh. And uh, 
the chemistry between the three of us when we are all together, it's exactly the same. And it's hysterical to just witness. Well, I got to ask you this since you brought that up. I remember from the from the series, a couple of scenes seeing Mr. Culp with a, a milk bone dog box and he would be eating <laughs> biscuits out of the box. Now, I've, I've watched the episodes over and over and over again, puzzling. I, I don't think Ralph had a dog. What, why was he was was Bill Maxwell just that tough of a guy? Well, I think that was just I don't know whether it was Bill Maxwell or Bob Culp. You know, both of them are kind of eccentric characters. OK, uh, but as the story goes and, and Connie tells this the best, I think they were uh, as best as I can recall. It was one of the early episodes of the show. And they watch a fan's going to call and tell me, no, I'm wrong. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, they were looking in the cupboard uh uh, at somebody we were staking out or something, and they found dog biscuits, and Bob just started uh, uh, nibbling on them, and then uh, and, and 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 he just kept it in character, and uh, that became a running gag on the show. Do they do they taste good? Oh, look, <laughs> tastes like cardboard to me. Yeah, we all tried it, but uh, I wouldn't make a regular diet out of it. But I don't think there's anything there that. Uh, it would hurt you. Maybe a little bit fiber for the diet, huh? There you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I have a, a bottle of Fiber One here now, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go buy a box of dog biscuits instead. <laughs> there you go. Now we were talking about the 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 six degrees of separation, uh -huh. and I happen to track one down on you. You've you've made a, a number of films. You you were in Carrie with the coal miner's daughter and and Vinnie Barbarino from Welcome Back, Cotter. Uh -huh. You were in the House movies and and on the House TV show a series a couple of seasons back, and and you directed a, a movie a couple of years back with Clint Howard. Yeah, and he spends a lot of his free time in a lot of his brother Ron Howard's movies. And he was in a movie just last year, Frost Nixon, uh -huh. with Kevin Bacon. Oh, my goodness sakes. That's so, crazy. Well, there you go. So in like two or three steps, you're connected to Kevin Bacon. Well, my God, isn't that amazing? <laughs> I've always been a huge fan of his. Uh, I always wanted to meet that guy. So now uh, maybe a friend of a friend is, of his is listening and uh, we'll tell him that uh, Bill Cat is a huge fan. It really is good talking to you. Can, Thanks, Dave. Do you mind? Do you mind if we catch up as this as the series continues? Because it's going to be a monthly series. Maybe we could catch up uh, um, when the next issue comes out and see, you know, when the new storyline starts. I guess what it's issue four and five is going to be a whole new story. Right, right. We're, uh, we're we're finishing the first three books are really a retelling of the original two hour pilot that right. the panel did. Now we do we do change out a couple of the characters and. Uh, we make the bad guys a little more important, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and again, as I said, we 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 at least uh, pose a couple of new questions: what happened to the uh, instruction book, mm -hmm. and what are these new powers that the suit is capable of? So we're going to have a little fun as these books continue, and. Um, kind of pick up where the show left off and explore things that we never got a chance to do. Very cool. Would you mind catching up when uh, when this new storyline starts? I would be thrilled. You give me a call. Definitely, definitely. Well, thank you so much. I, I do appreciate thank talking you. to you. All right, you guys have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye. Man, believe it or not, I got to talk to William Katz, star of The Greatest American Hero in the 80s.